Esse é o Rio Etec, voltando aqui da Web Summit Rio, e agora a gente vai ter uma entrevista em inglês, porque a gente vai falar com o Rafael Zeller, ele é da Start2, que é uma, tipo, uma aceleradora, é chamada também de German Accelerator, é uma aceleradora que vem da Alemanha é, para oferecer e para tentar é, mostrar para as startups alemães os mercados é, brasileiros, no caso dele, da América Latina como um todo. Hello, Rafael. Thank you for, for having this uh, conversation. Hi. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the goal of German Accelerator in Brazil? Well, thanks, Rafael. Uh, thank you, Beto, for having us. Thank you for interviewing me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here at the Web Summit. Um, German Accelerator is an organization uh, or a program funded by the German government um, with the objective of helping uh, German startups to get into new markets. We've been doing this for a lot of time to the US market, to markets in the uh, Asian region, right? All the relevant Asian markets that there are. And since the beginning of last year, we have added uh, several countries in South America to our map. So we're helping German startups to find out more about opportunities, but also risks in countries like Brazil, Argentina, Chile, and so on. And how do you choose those these startups that are going to be in the program? And what, what from what you see uh, so far, what is the difference between Brazil, Chile, Argentina, and the other countries that you are uh, working with? That's a very good question. So, first of all, the startups that we choose or pick is are not limited to any specific industry. So it's agnostic. It could be from any kind of industry. Um, and also the stages of the companies are very broad. They could be rather early or a little bit more mature until even very mature, right? So some, something between series A, B, and beyond. Um, but that being said, there is, of course, um, a certain uh, higher interest in certain industries, right? Because in, in South America, there is big industries or, or focus industries, key industries like agrotech or climate tech in Chile, for example, uh, uh, manufacturing. There are big manufacturing um, or German and international multinational companies manufacturing and producing in Brazil, right? So there are certain industries that, that have um, of course, uh, a higher request by German startups and German companies. Um, but in the end of the day, it could also be HR tech, ed tech, fintech, legal tech, could be everything, biotech, health, health, health tech, everything. And, and Brazil, uh, compared to the other countries, what do you see? What's the differences? Yeah. So, I mean, there are very obvious differences, right? When it comes to language, it's Portuguese and the rest of South America is mostly Spanish. Um, but that's, of course, the, 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 the no-brainers. The no Everyone knows that. But when it comes to doing business, the, the business culture is different. So we always talk, tell our startups, um, uh, depending on where they want to go and depending, depending on where they need to go based on their business model, what kind of market is interesting for them. When picking their foothold market, we tell them, you know, the, the, the differences in terms of, um, of market size, in terms of, uh, business culture, in terms of language and so on, regulatory things. Um, but of course, what we tell them is Brazil is a whole subcontinent, a whole different animal in the whole South American continent. So it's very different. There's a lot of opportunities. It's a huge... Uh, the scales are different. From huge the market, right? It's a different scale. You can easily become a unicorn only covering parts of, of Brazil, right? If you're only in Sao Paulo, that could be, you know, the market that you need. Um, but at the same time, it comes with a lot of risks and challenges as well. Um, and that's what we also tell our startups, so that they are ready once they start actually entering the market, right? And um, uh, maybe political stability or regulatory hurdles, uh, taxes, um, things like that are a little bit more challenging in Brazil than in other countries in South America, for example. And then, in the end of the day, it's up to the startup to, to decide is the opportunity worth the risk? Uh, and that's okay. basically so, the approach. To end now, 
pick three of your startups that are now at the, at the program and a, and a little description of what they do. You mean worldwide or for no, you're, you're interested in, in Brazil? Yeah, yeah, in Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, in Brazil. Yeah. So, um, okay, there is, um, as I said, it's across all industries, right? So it could be really, let me give you maybe different examples. There's, for example, um, one company, an alumni of us who has worked um, with us last year, they have a ticketing, a ticket management um, software to help um, event providers, like sports event providers, um, for example, to you know manage the, 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 the booking process, the ticketing process. They're called Ticket Bro, and they have already opened an, an entity, a joint venture here in Brazil. They have a team here, they're building a team, um, they have investors from Brazil. So they really went all in and um, are growing their business internationally by, by expanding their business in Brazil. It's just one example. Um, another one that is currently um, accompanying us here, uh, they are called Lexa Texa. Um, they are an enterprise uh, AI uh, SaaS solution that helps um, big companies, like for example, energy companies um, like Coppel um, or, or, or manufacturing companies to do pre predictive maintenance, right? For example, of, of energy turbines, um, they can predict if, uh, if a turbine can, can, can suffer or they can make a shop floor more productive um, of a manufacturing company. And they are also in the process of, of, of you know, finding out more about their opportunities and doing a process, uh, doing a project with Coppel, for example. And uh, thirdly, um, another company that is also here with us at Web Summit uh, in Rio um, is Aluga. Uh, and Aluga um, is uh, a, a German company as well, um, a startup. They have uh, over 40 people uh, working for them in, in Germany. And their solution is um, a software that helps you to translate every video or every kind of content that you create um, maybe of an event or maybe of a, ed, with an educational uh, background um, to be instantly translated into any language on the world. So it could be uh, um, the original video could be in Portuguese, for example. But if you have customers or employees in India or in the US or in Germany, they can all watch it in their own language and you only have to produce one video. So. Yeah. These kind of things, you see, it's very diverse. It's very different. Uh, a lot of different um, uh, uh, companies and, and, and industries, but that's what we do. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Rafael. Thanks for having us. Eu estive aqui com o Rafael Zeller da German Accelerator Stand Two e a gente volta já já.